One of the most important issues on the um, gem market is the issue of uh, the lead glass filling of fractures in rubies, rubies that we would have actually difficulty calling rubies in the rough because they are opaque, more browny than red. It's a process of taking very low quality ruby that couldn't really be used for jewelry at all and by filling it with lead glass, making it transparent and cuttable and therefore able to be used in jewelry. GIA has been exceedingly worried about this situation because people have been putting this material in very expensive looking jewelry and therefore making it very tempting for people to, to buy this jewelry because they think they are getting a bargain. Whereas in fact what they're getting is um, uh, a material that will last for a very short period of time and start to fall apart as they are wearing the stone. This material is relatively easy to identify, unlike so many other things that we deal with these days in, in treatments. All you need is a microscope and a little training, and you'll be able to see the properties that can readily identify the material. Now, the sort of things you need to look for to identify this material, the main one is a property we call the flash effect. You may have heard of this years ago, referring to diamonds that have fillings in their fractures. It's the same property. It's bright flashes of color, usually blue and orange, that you can see in the microscope or even with the loop if you have the right lighting. This is a telltale sign that this treatment has occurred. You also might see large gas bubbles inside cavities inside the stone or flattened bubbles that are confined to wide fractures that are filled with glass. Once you know what these things look like, they're very characteristic in their appearance and they don't look like anything natural. The problem with this is not only that it's taking material and making it into something that it really wasn't in the first place, but the lead glass that's being used to do the filling is not very durable. If you are dealing with lead glass filled rubies, you need to be aware that you must avoid any sort of jewelry repair procedures uh, that involve these stones. You also need to keep them out of any kind of solvents, including jeweler's pickling solution, or, or even some of the most basic solvents that you might find around the house, like bleach, for instance. All of these things could potentially damage the filler in these stones, and it's not repairable once it's been damaged. One of the large debates concerning this lead glass treated ruby is what it should be called. It's been called a number of things in the industry, including things like composite ruby, ruby with glass, hybrid ruby, many other sorts of names. One action that GIA has taken is to review the way it describes this material on the report. In doing so, it is redefining what may be regarded as a treatment and when that treatment moves into something else uh, where it no longer deserves the name of ruby in this instance but rather we call it what it is and that is a manufactured product. You need to know what it is and how to find out more information about it so it can be explained to the consumer so they understand what they're getting if they choose to buy such a product. This is a prime example of what GIA research is here for, to identify these kind of treatments and to disseminate that information to jewelers and the public and the rest of the industry. More information on lead glass filled rubies is available in GIA's scientific research journal, Gems and Gemology, or online at www.gia.edu.
Click on Research and Resources to find out more about GIA's ongoing research efforts to identify this and other gemstone treatments.